Hi dears, welcome to Way to Success Free. Now let's start from second chapter political science where we will talk about federalism. From this video let's learn more about federalism and why we call India a quasi-federal country. Let's start. Federalism means sharing of power between a central authority and various constituent units of the country. A federation has two levels of government. A general government for the entire country and governments at the provincial or regional level. Both these levels of government enjoy their power independent of the other. Let's look at the difference between unitary system and federal system. Unitary system. There is only one level of government or the subunits are subordinate to the central government. The central government can pass an order to the provincial or local government. The central government is supreme. Federal system. There are two or more levels of government. The central government can't order the state government to do something. State government has powers of its own. Key features of federalism. There are two or more levels of government. Different tiers of government govern the same citizens. But each tier has its own jurisdictions in specific matters of legislation, taxation and administration. The existence and authority of each tier of government is constitutionally guaranteed. Courts have the power to interpret the constitution and the powers of different levels of government. Sources of revenue for each level of government are clearly specified to ensure its financial autonomy. The federal system has dual objectives. First one is to safeguard and promote the unity of the country. Second one is accommodate regional diversity. What makes India a federal country? The Indian constitution is a threefold distribution of legislative powers between the union government and the state governments. It is done through the three lists. Union list, state list and concurrent list. Union list. It includes subjects of national importance such as the defense of the country, foreign affairs, banking, communications and currency. The union government alone can make laws relating to the subjects mentioned in this list. State list. It contains subjects of state and local importance such as police, trade, commerce, agriculture and irrigation. The state governments alone can make laws relating to the subjects mentioned in this list. Concurrent list It includes subjects of common interest to both the union government as well as the state governments. The list includes education, forest, trade unions, marriage, adoption and succession. Both the union as well as the state governments can make laws on the subjects mentioned in this list. All states in the Indian Union don't have identical powers. Some states enjoy a special status, for example Jammu and Kashmir. It has its own constitution. The union territories of India don't have the powers of a state. The central government has special powers in running these territories. The success of federalism in India is due to the nature of democratic politics in our country. The creation of linguistic states and the language policy are some of the major tests for Indian federation. Decentralization in India When power is taken away from central and state governments, and given to the local government. It is called decentralization. A major step towards decentralization was taken in 1992. The constitution was amended to make the three tier of democracy more powerful and effective. 
It is constitutionally mandatory to hold regular elections to local government bodies. Seats are reserved in the elected bodies and the executive heads of these institutions for the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes and other backward classes. At least one third of all positions are reserved for women. Rural local government is popularly known as Panchayati Raj. Each village or a group of villages in some states has gram panchayats. The panchayat works under the overall supervision of the gram sabha. When gram panchayats are grouped together, they form a panchayat samiti or block. All the panchayat samitis or mandals in a district together constitute the zilla parishads. As gram panchayats is for rural areas, similarly, we have municipalities for urban areas. Big cities are constituted into municipal corporations. This new system of local government is the largest experiment in democracy conducted anywhere in the world. Constitutional status for local government has helped to deepen democracy in our country. GS, let's stop this lesson now. I hope you understood the important points from this lesson. You can subscribe to my channel for more updates. Thank you.